Now let's turn our attention to the detection of neutrons. As I'm sure you remember from our discussion of special nuclear materials, these materials emit neutrons either by spontaneous fission, alpha N reactions, or by induced fission. Detection of neutrons is sometimes the best choice for detecting these types of materials because free neutrons very rarely occur spontaneously except in these materials. On the other hand, detecting neutrons is not easy. They're slippery little devils. As we talked earlier, they're neutral, so they do not interact directly with the electrons in matter. And it seems at first glance that all of our tricks that we've used so far will not work. However, we can adopt a different strategy. Since neutrons interact directly only with nuclei, that's our only choice. We have to somehow put nuclei with large interaction probabilities into our detector and choose those nuclei so that when they do interact with a neutron, they produce one or more charged particles. Now, all the tricks that we already know for collecting the electrons from ionizing radiation can be used to detect neutrons. There are two types of neutron interactions that we use to detect or measure properties of neutrons. One such reaction is elastic scatter, during which the neutron transfers some of its kinetic energy to a nucleus. If enough energy is transferred, the recoiling nucleus ionizes the material surrounding the point of the interaction. Fast neutrons pass the most energy during elastic scatter with low Z nuclides. So low Z materials are always used for recoil detectors. Recoil detectors are no good for thermal neutrons because thermal neutrons, if you remember, only have kinetic energies on the order of 1 40th of an EV. Considering that ionizations take at least a few EV, recoils from thermal neutrons don't do anything. The second type of nuclear reaction that we can use to detect neutrons is absorption reactions that produce charged particles. These charged particles can be protons, alpha particles, gamma rays, or fission fragments, among others. Some reactions require some minimum neutron energy, but most of the reactions that we use in neutron detectors are based on thermal neutron reactions. In general, the cross-section for nuclear reaction goes up as the energy of the neutron goes down. If there are fast neutrons that we are trying to detect, then the strategy often is to thermalize them so that they can interact with our detector. Both fast and thermal neutron detector materials can be solid, liquid, or gas. Let's look a bit closer at what you buy or lose for each type of detector. Here's a graph of the cross sections for helium-3, boron-10, and lithium-6. Uranium-235 and plutonium-239 have the same shape for low energy neutrons. This region below a few EV where the cross sections are straight lines on log-log graphs is called the 1 over V cross section region because the cross sections are proportional to the inverse of the neutron velocity. Notice that both of these axes are log scales so that I can gain factors of tens to hundreds to thousands in probability of interaction if I slow down or moderate the neutrons before they enter the detector.